So this is very uncomfortable. But I can follow the... <coughs> What's up guys, so today we're going to be talking about an NPA, which is, stands for a nasopharyngeal airway. It is on the same spectrum as a OPA, so an oral pharyngeal or airway. We're going to just discuss what are the pros, what are the cons, and when you're going to use this. And I'm going to put it in myself. When are you going to use this? So they say that this can be used on a conscious breathing patient as a way to increase the movement into or ventilation of air into the lungs and that you could put two in one and one in both nostrils and you can put an OPA as well they can be used in conscious or unconscious patients and that apparently you shouldn't use them in people with a basal skull fracture however if the basal skull is that big that you're going to insert a massive tube into it the odds are the patient is dead so that not really being a contraindication how do you use it well what does it do so this doesn't bring the tongue off the back of the pharynx all it does is it increases how much air it can move from your ventilation device. I assume you'd only be using this if you're using a BVM. Really what it's doing is, is it's decreasing the amount of resistance. If I had a patient who had um, trismus or if their um, jaw was shut closed for whatever reason, then maybe this would be a good idea. I have never used one of these. If you have, please drop a comment below. I'd love to hear about how it worked. Did it really work? Did it make any big difference? Really with today's options of supraglottic airways and intubation, I don't know how much of a place this has in our kit. I'd love to know your opinion. How do you put this in? Well, there is a bevel you see at the top and that slants. So if you're going to be going in the right nose, you're going to have the bevel facing towards the septum. So like that. If you're going to be going left nose, you're going to rotate and have the bevel facing the septum. You're going to insert and then rotate. What's really important is that you are heading straight for the ear and not going up. So you go in the nose and then you just go straight back towards the ear and then it's going to curve down like that. How do you measure it? Which is really important because I realized that I put it in and this is actually too big for me. I actually think it's too big. So the reason that I was gagging might just be because it was too big. How do you measure it? So you take it from your nose and you measure it to your earlobe and it should stop at my earlobe. But this is a good centimeter or two past my earlobe. So it is too big for me. It is also a size nine. So I'm pretty sure that's probably the biggest you're gonna get. So it's the biggest and probably the longest nasopharyngeal you can get. Um, it was very uncomfortable. It was painful at some times and I actually tried to get it in and I really, really struggled to just even get through the nose. And so I soaked it in hot water to soften the plastic. That made it a lot easier. Um, I didn't use any KY jelly and it really wasn't that bad once it was a bit soft, but I think because this one is so big, it was a bit more painful. So it's actually just too big for me. When I initially measured, I measured it like this and I said, well, it goes from my nose to my earlobe, that works. But if you actually just go nose straight to your earlobe, it's like a centimeter past my earlobe. So, I mean, we should be really more careful because they say that this won't make you gag, but this made me gag. So that was very unpleasant. I don't know how much value it has. I read in a textbook, I think it was the ACLS textbook that was saying that obviously if, if it's too small, it's just not going to do what you want it to do. But if it's too big, this could go into the esophagus. So if you push it down the guy's throat or the guy's nose and down into his throat and it goes under the trachea, which it should because it's more posterior, because your trach is anterior, then if this sits in your esophagus and you're now BVMing them from the top here, air will go straight into their stomach. So that is obviously not what you want. Um, it, it can cause trauma. I didn't have any bleeding, thank goodness. Um, if there is any like minor bleeding, you, there, you're, you are told to just ignore it. That makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, so really, I haven't ever used this. If you have, I'd love to hear about it, like I said. And if this video was at all entertaining or educational, I'd love a thumbs up and a share. So guys, thank you for your time and see you next one. Bye for now. That's how it goes in. I actually think it's too big.
Uh, <coughs> 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 This is how it comes out.